it's time for the battle we have all been waiting for. The final showdown between Asbat and Bane in Batman number 500. This issue is written by Doug Mensch, with art by Jim Aparo, Terry Austin, and Mike Manley. With colors by Adrian Roy, letters by Ken Brusniak, and is edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Danny O'Neill. A quick note on the cover. This issue has a foiled cover with the main cover on the front having Batman in the classic costume, normal, and the inside cover having Asbats foiled in the same pose, which is why it doesn't look so hot on the scans, either any unofficial scans that you were to read or even the official scans on the DC Universe app. We pick up right where we left off with Batman 2 dangling at Bane's mercy. Uh, Batman manages to break free, barely, and Bane makes a break to, for it through the lobby. He runs right past Batman 2 with the successor being unable to follow. And oof, it, when he makes three, he <laughs> belly flops in the fountain and hits his shit right on the side. That, even with you've got that, that armored, that's got a smart. Meanwhile, Tim calls his girlfriend, Ariana, because he legitimately needs someone to talk to just right now, just to just talk between, well, you know, his dad disappearing, Bruce also disappearing, and John Paul being kind of a dick. Back at the hotel, GCPD is taking in Trog, Zombie, and Bird back into custody again, and it seems that Mayor Kroll and Gordon are also, once again, no longer on speaking terms. Robin returns to the Batcave, where Jean-Paul is working out. They argue over Jean-Paul's methods, and Robin makes it clear that if Jean-Paul keeps it up, they're done. After Tim leaves, Jean-Paul returns to the drawing board for a full costume redesign. At the mayor's mansion, Mayor Kroll informs Lieutenant Kitsch that GCPD is to stay out of Batman's way. They're still to follow the rules like normal, but Batman gets carte blanche, which isn't really the rules like normal, even when Batman was deputized. Back at GCPD, Commissioner Gordon wonders just what the hell is happening with Batman. In the Batcave, John Paul continues to work as Harold looks on from his hidey hole along with Ace the Bathound. At the lockup, Bane covertly checks in with Zombie. Bane's wounded and needs more venom. Zombie provides the location of a cache, but Bane refrains from breaking them out for now. Outside Wayne Manor, Robin is sulking when Nightwing drops in. Apparently, Oracle told him Bruce was okay, but didn't give him any context. Consequently, Dick doesn't know about Bruce's paralysis, nor the fact that the mantle's been passed to John Paul. Neither person is particularly happy with this. Tim Bane blames himself, probably due to the costume he designed being too close to battle heads, but Dick tells him that's silly. Turn out of the manor, the cave, even the team itself, and all because Bruce is out of danger. Nightwing, how do you know he was? I had to learn it from Oracle. Um, sorry, Bruce felt it'd be best to keep it secret. Even from me? Hey, it's been kind of frantic around here. No doubt. Well, let Bruce tell me about it. He's not here. And neither is Alfred. And yet the Batman looms large in today's news. It's not him, Nightwing. He's out of danger, but he's still in a wheelchair. He asked someone to fill, fill in for him. John Paul Valley, formerly known as Azrael. And he didn't ask me. Would you have accepted? If he needed me. All right, but would you want have wanted to accept? No. And he knew that, Nightwing. He says you'd become your own man. Be beyond his shadow. Also, Nightwing wouldn't have wanted to accept it because he wouldn't have wanted the situation to have come to pass in the first place. I mean, children don't want to be the executor executors of their parents' estates because doing that, even if they're being preemptively named the ex executors of their parents' estates um, in their wills while their parents are alive, means that facing the fact that their parents, whether it's their parents by birth or adoption, are mortal and people tend to be frankly a lot more accepting of their own mortality than they are of their parents or their parental figures so saying so nightwing saying he didn't want to take over the mantle of the bat doesn't necessarily 
say anything about Nightwing not being willing to do it and not and also doesn't saying oh it's because it's your own man now that's reading a bit too much in, that's reading the wrong thing into it i would say elsewhere bane finds his cache of venom and is ready for round two at santa prisca bruce reflects on how important chandra is for him this bit i should mention in advance is jumping the timeline for night quest the search so we're going to revisit this later when we cover the relevant issues of justice league task force in Gotham, Bane kills the guy and updating the display for a big LED sign display so he can send a message of his own. And in the Batcave, Robin discovers the design of the new costume. The second chapter opens with Asbats. I'm deliberately transforming the new name now because it's the, it's the new costume he'll be sticking with in the full costume gliding over the city when he sees Bane's updated sign. Now I could give my big give a big God damn it, 90s complaint, but I'm honestly actually not. Aside from the claws and the leg pouches, and even then with the claws, we've had some narrative justifications for why they're there in the first place, outside of cruelty. The costume isn't that bad. We're going to see a lot more of the tricks that it has under the hood throughout Knight's Quest, and I'll go over them as they come up. But again, a lot of this is conceptually fitting as outgrowths of existing gadgets. The claws... I could see a less aggressive form being implemented in Bruce's own costumes as something he can kind of slide out if he needs to climb up something without sufficient track, without sufficient grip. The wrist-mounted shuriken launcher, it's an outgrowth of the Batarangs, which are themselves effectively shurikens. Um, the cape, like this is meant to be the sort of memory glider cape thing that, we, that was introduced from Jump Street in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. So, and is a featured part of traversal in the Arkham game. So a lot of this is like almost stuff that we're generally familiar with. What makes it nineties and edgy is the pouches and the fact that it's not the bat suit that we're used to. Bane's message, by the way, is Batman now with Batman being in scare quotes which is remarkably passive-aggressive for you, Bane. I think America is rubbing off on you. We get a sequence with some positively indigo poros and Asbat's internal monologue as he makes his way to the fight. It's almost like he's a different person. The ocean recedes by now, displaced by a bracing wind. It clears his mind of the dreamlike sleep. He is alert now, out of the ocean, out of the cocoon, a new creature drying in the biting air. His new crepe's gra cape grabs the wind, swelling on its lift, no longer a hindrance. He hears it as, it as he glides, softly at first, at distant and echoing, haunting. Then it rises, a sound not unlike a woman's voice, keening higher and louder and closer until it fills his heart with its an unearthly thrill. It is the wild night screaming for his soul. He wides it. Everything is bright and glittery now, a million lights shimmering through a wind, help whipping him straight to hell or salvation. He doesn't care which. He just wants an end or a beginning. Something. Anything. As long as it's hard, fresh, and final. He is still high on the creation, stretching out to fill this new thing he had fashioned without thinking, somehow knowing it is right. Feeling a black comet slashing through the sky, slattering, scattering stars in his awake. It was a thing born only when nothing else matters, filling him now, as he rides, even as he rides it, harder. A perfect cast, forged in a fire he never felt. He feels larger, stronger. He touches another creation, one which he has not felt in a hundred years. He wishes it would take flight for the sheer thrill of chasing it. He knows his mind has been violated by the system, but he does not care. The wild knight still screams for whatever he has become, shaped by unseen hands for an undreamed purpose. And for, and for his own reasons, he is willing clay. It waits for him out there, the brute demonic force which smashed the old and created the new. It holds an end, promising a beginning, one for each of them. He wonders where, and the city becomes a puzzle. One piece, the key, unlocking the collective prize of the whole. And find that piece in the puzzle is his, the meaning revealed, the prize claimed. And then even though that piece is but one of millions, it is the dark heart shading the whole. It is Bane. The key is Bane. Find him. Remove him. Take his place. And become a darker heart. 
feeding the rest, the new center holding it all. As Bats reaches the chosen battleground, Gotham's Times Square, or equivalent, where Bruce was originally dumped, as the rain begins to fall. Asbats calls out Bane, and Bane responds. GCPD holds a perimeter, as Lieutenant Kitsch stops a sniper from opening fire on Bane. Mr. Gordon shows up and also notices the scare quotes on the sign for Batman. You can drop him right now, Lieutenant. No. Sir, is he committing a crime for which lethal force is justified? No, but... Is he fleeing the scene for a crime for which lethal force is authorized? Well, not exactly, but then we don't interfere. Is it weird for me that the most unrealistic thing here in this whole thing is the cops not shooting an unarmed brown person? I mean, yes, he's Bane, but still. Bane and Asbats exchange taunts, but the rain is coming down so hard that Gordon and Bullock can't hear them. You're different, but still pretending to be the Batman. Change the costume all you want, but you're nothing but a co and you're nothing but a costume, not him. Eh? What did Bane just say, Bullock? Couldn't hear from this distance, Kamish. No, I'm not him. I'm a lot more, and a lot worse. I'm a lot like you, Bane, except I've stopped my fall, just short short of the bottom. Gotham is mine, in my pocket. Prepare to be mugged. You were doing so well until that last line. Asbat gets the upper hand to start, but a hit of venom allows Bane to gain control. The Dark Angel, the title of the issue and a fitting term for Asbats in this costume, barely gets free and manages to cut Bane's venom tubes before he can take another hit. Bane flees to the EL tracks, with Gordon stopping SWAT from opening fire for fear of hitting Batman. Bane boards an oncoming tra incoming train, hijacking it and killing the driver in the process, as Asbats grabs on with the bat line. Bane grabs the accelerator to full, which, because this isn't dented to D, means the train is going to go hurtling off the tracks. Robin blows the link between the front car, where Bane and Asbats are fighting, and the rear car, which is where everyone has fled to, saving the passengers from the this fate. However, this also causes the front car to speed up further, causing it to go flying off the next turn and into a building. Bane crawls out prone while the Dark Angel is standing. Bane asks Batman to kill him as Robin and GCPD look on. Much to their relief, Asbats decides not to. Batman. Kill me. Batman. No. You're broken, Bane. Blackgate Prison can hold the pieces. Robin even gives Jean Paul an undeserved apology as the issue ends and that John Paul should be the one apologizing to him. The letters column has another complaint about John Paul, this one complaining about him looking like a cutie boy. First, really? Second, I'm assuming this is before he had the haircut and dumped the Val Kilmer and weird science look, or um, true, uh, true Genius, whatever it was. That movie, Real Genius. That look. Second, Really? The rest of the letters are also just bemoaning the decision to bench Bruce, with the more of the view saying they're leaving comics, or at least DC, forever over this, some after 35 years. To which I say, if you have been reading comics for 35 years, you know that lo nothing lasts forever, and that's especially retirements. This was a satisfying conclusion of tonight's, tonight's quest. It's a fight that really sells, that Bane is still a threat. And while John Paul gets the win, it's through clever fighting while rested up. Presumably something a fully rested Bruce could have done as well on the rematch had he been able to get that rest. While the issue sets can use to set up Asbats as the darker, edgier character, it also tries to alleviate some of the worries that we had from previous issues. With the full awareness that going into this and moving forward, John Paul could still lose his grip on the system and go out of control again, or rather I should say the system could regain its grip on him. It puts the reader in a situation where they don't want to see Jean-Paul be the bat forever, 
but they do want to see where things go from here, and it also sets up a couple alternative options. Does Nightwing permanently be take over as Batman after this, and Bruce remains in an advisory role, or does Bruce somehow manage to regain his, his ability to walk and full mobility and reclaim the mantle again? We have now some options for possible resolutions going forward. Next time, we have a bit of an interlude as we're going to start taking a look at the big annual event that DC dropped into their comics at this time, Bloodlines. See you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.